guys, um, another new boat, new video, um, yeah, a couple of people asking me now when am I going to do a new video, so given the weather, um, ideally I would have liked to have done it on the water, but here we are, we have settled for the Alley Deck 395 Vanguard by XL, um, there was a choice between the Onwave and the XL, is it, the 390 I had previously was going to be this, but they didn't have no stock, so which left me with a dilemma. Do I get the T35 Alley Deck on wave? I haven't just had the T32 A Deck. Um, it didn't offer much room, and why I quickly moved that on. Lovely boat, mind you, on wave, lovely, takes the water like no other. Personally, I think it's the best boat on the water by far. Fastest. Um, I think I clocked 29 knots on the T32 with a 15 horsepower yam. Flying, absolute flying. It's just, um, I didn't like how the floor was. Uh, being air deck, it was felt like it was always going to be wet and maybe I rushed into it being a bit too small I went for the super lightweight option coming off an hard stack pool trip And I dived into the T32 anyway I then had the T30, no, I went, went with the 330 Volante Which lovely little air deck, but lovely, I think a cracker to be honest with you um, but I soon wanted big air again, but I did have the 360 Volante before that, so um, my option was then, after the 330, was to go with the 395 Alley Deck and be done with it. But they didn't have no stock, so I was left with a bit of a dilemma whether to get the Onwave T35 or because I didn't have the T38 the air deck, I probably would have had the T38 if I'm honest, if it was there. So I settled with the XL Volante 390. Um, not a bad boat to be honest with you, it's the space I was after. And this have come available now, the new carbon black Vanguard. 395 X HD, I believe that's the numbers, but yeah, I think 75 kilos it is an heavy old bit of boat, but um, it's you know, it's why I bought it. I like the space, I like the quality. The quality of XL is by far leaps ahead of any other any, any other board. Um, but again, it has its pros and it has its cons, like all other boats. Um, it is heavy. It is maybe a bit flat. And when I say flat, like the Onwave, they got a nice up upswept front end, so you're always gliding lovely over the water. Um, these are a bit flat, but still a nice, nice ride. Um, and like I said, the quality, like the double gluing on everything, especially like on the seats. Uh, I know a lot of boats, cheap boats have this, but a lot of ex expensive um, boats don't have it. And I think definitely being on the seats, you need that extra bit of... Um, you know, extra bit of protection strength because they will peel off. I have seen them peel off. The on wave, no, it's not the on wave. Which other boat got them? I haven't got them. And I have seen them peel off. I'll have to have a look. I can't remember which one. Um, but yeah, the quality, you know, is for now we'll do that. So, um, absolute sublime bit of kit. Uh, I am a little disappointed, mind, how they haven't give handles on the inside of the Riga sponsons. Whereas on the 390 you had the handles inside, 
so you could lift up, move it on the trailer, and do what you want to do. Now you've got three angles on the outside. Um, I mean, if I'm honest, yeah, anyone know why? But yeah. You can see um, going on my last solid floor board. This is so much more easier to put together. And you've got the extra contact protection, uh, bumpers, stop pads, as you can see. Just that little bit, down touch makes it all, you know, peace of mind kind of thing. Um, yeah. We have got, coming soon, so if you are interested, we are going to do a... Um, going to do an alley deck, which will be this 395, and a day with the T38, the Mark II version, with the splash pads on the back. Personally, I think that is the best air deck sib you can buy. And, yeah. So we're going to have a day on this and then a day on that and just do a bit of comparison with it. So keep an eye out for that video, that'll be soon. Um, yeah, so we have gone with a similar setup as the 390. So I've got the Real Blazer mounts on the benches. Not older. Real blazers on the back. I went for the sup rod again, we'll talk about them in a minute. And we've got the Oak Reveal 7 SS. This model has the 50 stroke 200 transducer. And I think they say they have transducer is better for deeper water, but if you have a look on my last video, I think it was the bass at Nash, you will see, you know, for me or anyone that's not really, really clued up on the detailing, you know, you won't tell a difference. But the quality is fabulous, absolutely fabulous. I was pr pretty gutted when I got rid of the Dragonfly for this, but to be honest with you, it is, I like it, it's a good bit of kit. I've got the Navionics card in here as well for, I think it's from like Cornwall to Liverpool, so it covers the old Bristol Channel, West Wales, uh, some of Cornwall, so yeah, it covers all my fishing grounds really. Um, bench bag, now I put the bench bag on there. Um, nice tip if you are going to use the bench as rod holders and mounts, get the smaller version so you ain't covering the mounts. Um, but yeah, the bench bag goes on it, everything goes on it out of the way. Battery box for the fish finder. Um, give me a quick look. USB switch on, SAE for the fish finder. I got banana clips here, so if you want to put nav lights on there or any other electrical, that's on a switch there. And deck lights or nav lights, whatever. But yeah, that goes in there, so everything's out of the way. I got another bench bag for by you. So all my tackle now that goes up the front. I got all this deck space then for fishing. So, um, sub rod. You might have heard me on my last video say about um, when I done a review on the 390 about the sup rod being a little overwhelmed by the weight of the 390. Well, it's still the case to be honest with you, but they have made some improvements. Now these are puncher proof and they're sup rods, all make. Uh, the upright, uh, I think it's 25 mil steel bar, is actually about 3 mil thick now. And then compared to other wheels, and let's be honest, we have got a very poor selection of poor quality wheels on the market. I think this is probably one of the best of the pick of a poor 
uh, bunch, but I still, you know, still don't like the fact that that axle, right, I'll show you, if you can see it, it's a load of movement in there, held on by a small bolt. Now this could be made much better. See that gap there? So a lot of movement. If these come pre-welded there and inside and add the bolt for extra, then you could be onto a game changer. But I am gonna take this down the shop tomorrow, have them welded up, and it will make a hell of a difference. And also just one other little thing. The bracket, they're a bad bracket, as you can see the quality, but it's still loose. It's a still a loose fit, which if you're working on it, it's gonna bend more, so maybe pull that in, bend it in a bit. But yeah, being on a trailer, it's gonna be for minimal use anyway. But for 100 pound, then a barred wheel, and they can be worked to make them better. I'm working on that note. The transducer mount, I'd use the same as well as the wheel bracket. So, done exactly the same as the last last three bolts I've had, and used the wheel bracket as the transducer mount, which works absolutely perfect. And last but not least, the motor. This is the 2020 Suzuki EFI, 15 horsepower, 4 stroke, weighs 44 to 46 kilos. Um, fabulous, absolutely fabulous bit of kit, unless you're buying spark plugs for them. And they are not cheap, and they are hard to get hold of. Well, they were when I wanted them anyway. So, but yeah, I think it's got about 40 odd hours on there now. And when I added it, it had three, three hours. But a cracking, cracking bit of kit. And I can upgrade this to a 20 horsepower with that CDI control kit. But I'll wait, if this is good, then I'll continue to use it. Or I might even put a 25 on here for what is rated. Um, but yeah, I'm missing a thing about. That's basically everything. Um, showing you everything. But I am thinking of a either another rubber mat in on the floor because I do like to be on the floor, and well, Ali can be a bit harsh on the old knee. So, do I go with a rubber mat in or like an EVA? Um, sticky back foam, deck foam, I don't know whether you've seen it, just soften it up, it is lightweight, so do not really to go with that, and yeah, I think that's it guys, um, I hope you like it, I'm hoping, weather permitting, we've got a trip booked, um, we've got a trip booked at Twin, 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 West Wales, mainly for surface lure bass fishing mid-september and then we'll probably try west wales once more for the bigger top and then we'll be on to the bristol channel for the cod in between having a knock about with other local places for bass and other general fishing but mainly that's the plan for the for the rest of the year so if anyone fancies to in this will be planning on the 16th of september and we're gonna stay up there have a have a sash like and stay up here for the weekend weather permit then and then if you fancy coming down on the cod to meet us up you know have a look on south wales sit anglers everything on there um meetups local local knowledge and yeah thank you guys anything you can do um drop a message and if you have got the 395 what engine are you using and what type of performance you get in um be interested to know what people get from different hp because if i i don't want to go balls deep in on a 25 van 
and I'm only going to gain a little, a little bit, or pay out the money for the kit for the 20, and I'm only going to get a very little gain. So, be interesting to know. Um, yeah, I'll give you a quick look around here now before I go. So, as you can see, it's like the Arundel, lovely quality. Cam that shows the line there too. Definitely miss them handles on the back. You know what I mean? Definitely miss them.